Now we're going to go over to Mark. Okay, thanks, Linda. Well, these are stressful times. All you have to do is watch the news for a couple of minutes to know that. One of the biggest responsibilities, though, that we have as parents is to try to see that that our kids, well, they, they need to learn how to deal with this stuff, but we don't want to traumatize them by it. So can we trauma-proof our kids? Well, we have an expert here this morning that uh, works with the folks at NASA and other folks on trauma and stress, Dr. Peter Levine. Good to see you this morning. Uh, yeah. Did, did I kind of explain that? I mean, we don't really have any way to trauma-proof our kids in terms of insulating them from the trauma and stress. It's out there. That's right. That's right. I mean, bad things happen. I mean, just sitting here for a few minutes, you know, listening. You were getting depressed watching the news. I know. Well, yeah, I saw it I on mean, your face. It's, <laughs> I, fear, anger. Right. You know, but the thing is, um, kids especially don't have uh, uh, an ability to calm themselves and so it's the, the they need their parents to help them do that so you put together a nice guide for them called trauma proofing your kids a parents guide for instilling confidence joy and resilience yes oh if we could give that gift to our children I think our, our work as parents would be uh, just about be done wouldn't it yeah I mean what more could a parent want to instill in their kids and the 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 strategy is that bad things happen I mean there's not a day that goes by that there's not something that's that, that's that's that, that's upsetting. Sure. The, but the question is whether we get stuck with it or we can or whether we move through it. I was just thinking a moment ago about the pilot that landed his plane in the Hudson River, and people were talking about how calm he was. He didn't have any fear. Right. I, I knew that wasn't true. Of course not. And he he said it in an interview. He said he was terrified. But he didn't get stuck with his terror. I mean, he didn't panic. If he had, everybody would so have So I'm panicked. guessing that uh, where we're headed with this is that it has a lot to do with preparation and training. So that, if we can train our kids ahead of time? That's right. And what we need to do is first train ourselves. Because, you know, again, going back to airplanes, if there's a depressurization, they say, you know, the masks will come down, put it on your mouth first then take care of the child next right. to you so when we see our kids take a spill uh, and um, our first reaction is to run maybe we're even going to be angry because we're, we're we're frightened but we've got to take a moment for ourselves take a breath feel our own sensations you see because fear is something that happens physically in the body it's the knot in the gut or the, the pounding heart. There is a physical reaction exactly. that's taking place. So you, you tell kids to get in touch with that well, and, and not ignore that physical sensation? That's right. A lot of times our, our first reaction is, okay, Johnny falls off the bike. Let's put him right, right back on the bike to, you know, overcome this fear. Well, there's some steps in between that parents need to take. First, again, is their own reaction. And when you see when we're... Ex experiencing threat when we're exposed to threat or danger our bodies mobilize a lot of action a lot of energy for action and we don't actually make that action so the energy gets locked in the right. body so if we teach our kids just to stay with their body sensations for a little bit we help guide them there then amazingly this is the fear it just opens it's just that's how we're hardwired now, we put some tips up here, and, and again, we're not going to be able to even begin to get to all the steps and, and everything here, but develop a calming presence. That's, that's one of the first things you say. As an adult, keep your cool. That's right. That's right. That's the, f the first thing. And then the kids learn by example. They communicate and, uh, and develop dialogue with children. Just can we do 10 seconds on that? So important. So important. I mean... These days, sometimes we have so little contact with our kids. Anyhow, parents are, have two jobs. They come back, and then the your kids are on TV or the video game and so forth. It's really important, especially in these times, to cultivate more family time. Also, taking the kids out to play, so, so important. That's activity. I mean, we may not have the money to buy them a thousand sure. toys, but boy, we can go and, 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 and play with them and do physical things, which are so important in keeping the body open. I, I wish we had more time to continue the discussion, but I'm going to send everybody to the website at sandiego6.com, and uh, we'll put a link there at Hot Topics. The book, Trauma Proofing Your Kids, Dr. Peter Levine. Uh, great start to the conversation. I'll let folks pick it up by picking up the book. All right. Thank you, and good to meet you, Mark. You too. Thanks yeah. for coming in. Bye-bye. All right. Let's get back over to Renee. We'll talk a little weather and traffic here. Not too traumatic today in that uh, department, thankfully.